Hi everyone, I'm Rhino, and in this video I'll break down what Enigma's dynamic Cold War server is all about. If you're new to the channel, I fly mainly Cold War setting jets and all helicopter modules, and I specialize in the practical aspects of flying and fighting these modules, rather than the technical aspect and proper procedure. In short, if you want to know what that button or switch does and how it fits in a checklist, you see Chuck's guides. If you want to know how to use that switch to kill the enemy and survive, this is the place to be. Enigma's Cold War server is a unique experience that is constantly pushing the boundaries of DCS multiplayer. It is the only server that features a dynamic campaign, where player actions have lasting effects and campaigns can range from 2 days to 28 days. This is based on campaigns we have finished so far. It is also uncontested as the best place for Hilo multiplayer gameplay, due to the mechanics I will explore a bit later. The server mission statement is, and I quote, to provide a fun, competitive and balanced multiplayer dynamic campaign in DCS centered around the Cold War setting. The main pillars it builds on are 1. Fun Restrictive mechanics will never be a part of the server. 2. It delivers a competitive campaign. 3. Balance and asymmetry. The server achieves balance while still allowing for asymmetrical fights. Plane sets are sourced from historical availability to allow for asymmetrical fights, but are tweaked to ensure that there is parity between sides. Most of this tweaking comes into availability of what weapons are and are not restricted. 4. Creative Freedom That's a lot of words, but what does it all mean? Well, there is the map, 30 sectors equally divided between the two sides at the start of the campaign. It is the frontline mechanic what really drives the server and is, at this time, unique in DCS. The first blue and red sectors form the front line and are populated by groups of static units with their own air defenses. Players will need to destroy enemy frontline units and defend their own, and this is the main battlefield where 90% of the action happens. Every two hours, a check is run automatically, and if one side has a certain advantage over the other, they will push a sector and the front line will respawn in the new place and the contest begins again. This check takes into account the frontline health, the depot health, the industrial health and adds modifiers for attrition, which I will go into a little bit later. If one side has a 50 point advantage over the other, which increases with high attrition, that side will push a sector. A special mechanic is the breakthrough mechanic, where if one side manages to get the opposing side's health to 200 points or less, they will immediately push two sectors and a third one when the next two hour check happens. This is incredibly difficult to do, has only been done twice so far in 11 campaigns that have been fought on the server since it began. Additional ways to directly influence the movement of the front line are strikes against tactical targets, which are represented by heavily defended depots a few sectors back into the enemy territory, and strategic strikes against undefended industrial targets, which are far back into enemy territory. These long and dangerous missions can actually influence the front line over two checks, so four hours, if they are performed before the two hour check once the server restarts. In addition to directly influencing the front line by destroying enemy units, logistics and infrastructure, there are ways to indirectly influence the war. Strategic bombers take off regularly and attack the enemy's main industrial site. If left uncontested, they will inflict massive damage, which almost always ensures a front line push. So intercepting and therefore escorting these bombers becomes a priority. Let's now talk about the Hilo game, which is what first brought the server to my attention. Uniquely so, the Hilo game offers an incredible experience 
which I urge all of you to try. In this server, kilos are incredibly important and they are not relegated to sling loading and logistics like most servers out there. At the moment, there are three main jobs for helos, with a fourth interesting mechanic announced and nearing release. 1. Directly destroy the enemy ground and air units. This is usually achieved by the attack helos, the hind and gazelle, but the transport helos often engage in furious fights at treetop level while the jets duel above. 2. Troop deployment by the transport helos, which at the moment are the MI-8 HIP and the Huey. They can drop troops, which will then attack and destroy enemy ground units automatically if conditions are met. At this time, these conditions are Drop within 3 kilometers of enemy units The drop is wholly within the enemy sector and the soldiers survive for three minutes, at which point they will despawn and destroy enemy units automatically. Currently, both the HIP and Huey can carry two troops of four soldiers, and each troop will destroy three enemy ground units, so a drop can kill six units in total. There is some balancing discussions taking place, and it is likely that soon a troop will kill two units instead of three. The Huey will probably continue to carry two units, while the HIP might carry three. The third important job for helis is search and rescue. I will take a moment to explain the attrition mechanic as it ties very closely with the combat search and rescue. What is attrition? It's a very interesting mechanic which rewards pilots flying safely and returning to base. It also is the mechanic that rewards combat air patrol activity and controlling the airspace. The side with the higher attrition, which means the side which has lost more airframes than the other, will have a more difficult job of pushing the front line. For example, and please keep in mind these numbers are simplified to make it easy to understand, they are not the real calculations. Let's say red side has 20 attrition and blue side has only 10 attrition. This means that blue side will only need the minimum number of points, which is 50, to push the front line, while the red side will have to have an advantage of 75 points to push the front line. All airframes have a cost assigned to them, and taking off with that airframe adds the number to your side's attrition. When you land safely, at a road base or airfield, that number is subtracted. If a pilot gets shot down, but also manages to eject safely, a combat search and rescue mission is created, and should a helo safely extract that pilot and land at a friendly airfield, FARP or road base, half of the attrition cost is refunded. This means that a combat search and rescue role, although often overlooked, has on this server a major significance as it reduces attrition and thus it makes it easier for your side to push the front line. Enemy pilots can be captured as well and the same attrition is deducted from your side's total. Combat search and rescue missions are being signaled by the downed pilot with a flare when any helo, be that enemy or friendly, passes within four kilometers and then by colored smoke either blue or red based on the pilot's side, when the helo is within 2 kilometers. Landing or achieving a stable hover within 100 meters of a downed pilot will extract them, and once landed at a friendly base, the mission is considered a success and the attrition cost is refunded. Friendly downed pilots will also broadcast radio guidance by their emergency transmitters, which can be received on the heli radios and can be used to provide guidance to the pilot. Attack helos can also perform combat search and rescue, but have limited seats and are usually best employed in their direct role in destroying enemy units. A fourth mechanic for helos has been announced and is still in development, where transport helicopters will be able to capture and shut down 
and possibly reinforce and defend or even repair the road bases. Other things worth mentioning about the server. There is a very active human GCI element, which immensely helps immersion. The server also uses Overlord Bot, which is a voice recognition bot, which serves as AWACS and early warning system when human GCIs are not online. Now let's talk for a minute about the future of the server. The main airfields will become attackable, which will then shift focus on road base mechanics. The road bases will be invulnerable to bombs and rockets, leaving the transport helo drops as the only means of shutting them down. A comprehensive and unique stat system independent of DCS stats tracking has been announced. There will be a similar campaign on the Syria map. It is believed that the server will rotate between the two maps, Caucasus and Syria, in order not to split the player base. Special limited airframes. The MiG-29 for Red 4 and the F-14 for Blue 4 will come into play. These will be extremely limited and will need to be earned by destroying a number of ground targets or possibly strategic bombers. Once lost, the condition for earning them will have to be met again in order to be able to fly that particular airframe. In closing, I hope this has been helpful. This is rightly so one of the most popular servers. It is populated pretty much around the clock and full in prime time. There's also quite a vibrant Discord community and the links are below in the description. Lastly, I would like to mention that the costs associated with the upkeep of the server are extremely high. According to Enigma, in December 2021, it was over $700 a month to keep the server up. The team is currently covering part of these costs out of pocket, so please, if you enjoy the unique experiences offered by the server, consider supporting them by contributing to Enigma's Patreon and YouTube channel, which are linked below in the description. I hope this video has been of help, and if you enjoyed it, you know what to do. I stream on twitch.tv rhino, and I hope to see you all over there. Rhino out.